Hi, I'm Robert. So today I'm going to be talking about different ways that you can purchase Capture One and different versions of Capture One that you can buy and why you might choose one over the other and which one works for you. It's a question I get asked a lot and I'm going to go over, cover all of that today. Also, there was a new major version of Capture One that was released uh, last month in December and also I'll talk about whether or not it makes sense to upgrade to this version or not, at least in my opinion. And there's been some pricing changes as well. So we'll talk about how those pricing changes impact going impact us going forward, depending on how you've purchased Capture One. Before we get into that, though, there's something that I want to cover because there's something that I've been working on lately um, on the side as a separate project, and it's finally ready to talk about. So and it also explains this crazy COVID beard that I'm wearing. It really isn't because of COVID. It's because I've been distracted doing some other things. And I thought, well, it doesn't matter anyway. So there's something that always sort of bothered me about when I was delivering images, something that I thought could be better. You see, when I do headshots and portraits for people, I often like to create a second version of each image as a square crop and send that as well. So that makes it easier for them to upload their headshot as a profile image, and then they can use the normal 4x5 crop on a website or wherever they want to use it. That's up to them. But the square one just makes it easy to use for posting to LinkedIn or wherever. And it always kind of, and that's the part that always kind of annoyed me because I have to do the initial crop for the main image and then go back to every other, back to the image and then create a variant, do a square crop, reposition it for each image. And I always thought there must be a better way. Well, I found a better way, or at least I built a better way. It's called Crops. It's available down below. And what it does is it uses face detection to detect where the face is in the image, and then it just puts a square around that and exports that through Capture One's export recipe process. So it's a plugin for Capture One. As I said, it's available down below. There's a 30 day trial that you can use to try it out. And let me know if it's something that you find useful. I really uh, you know, appreciate that. Hopefully you do. And yeah, I'll talk more about that in the future. I'll do some videos on that so you can see what I'm talking about. This is just really a introduction to it. So now we'll talk about Capture One. So what we see here, at least currently with Capture One, there's really four different main versions of Capture One Pro. There's the one for every camera and then three other versions for Fuji, Sony, and Nikon cameras. Other than the fact that the ones on the right, those three versions are for specific cameras, Fuji, Sony, Nikon, all the other capabilities of Capture One are the same in all four versions. So the first one, the one that it says starting from $19, the one on the left, the for every camera, that just supports every camera that Capture One supports. There's no limitations or anything. The other ones only support images that were taken, raw images that were taken on that manufacturer's camera. So the Fujifilm One will only edit raw files from Fuji cameras and so on. Everything else is the same. Basically, if you're shooting one of those cameras and only have the images from that camera, or at least only care about images from that camera or manufacturer, then those less expensive ones, the camera specific ones, those are perfect for you. And I did talk about pricing changes and these are the prices that changed. Previously, before this year, the four of your camera was $19.99 or $20. I forget, it was, it was they basically dropped it by a dollar and the other ones were all $10. So they've raised the price on the camera specific ones really to, to reflect the fact that there's, it's essentially identical to Capture One Pro, the same feature set, just only one camera. So let's look at the for every camera price. Now this is the full version of Capture One and there's two ways to purchase all of these versions of Capture One. You can either buy a perpetual license, which is this one right here. And this is a version, a one flat price that covers this, that is specific to this major version of Capture One. So if you purchase this license only version of Capture One, then you have a license for Capture One Pro 21, and you'll be able to use that for as long as you want, or at least as long as you have a computer that you can run it on. And there's no monthly fees, there's no subscriptions, there's no support, nothing, you just get that camera. And any update that comes out for that version, you'll be able to install and use for that version. So that's, that's version one, or that's way to purchase it one. And then the other way is with a subscription and that's over here on the far right. Now here, there are actually three different options. There's the 
uh, pay for it annually or you can pay for it monthly. And there's two different ways to pay for it monthly. Let's talk about the, the one at the bottom first. So the one that's $24 a month, this is really going month to month. If you are still kicking the tires of Capture One but need some more time after the trial period, or maybe you're only using Capture One for a particular project, like maybe you have to rent a phase one and you need Capture One to go with that, then you could just get a, a month to month version, keep it for a month or two, finish the images, export them as TIFFs, and then cancel the subscription, something like that. I think that's what this month to month is really meant for. Um, the other two options are an annual, that is, you're making an annual commitment for Capture One, and but you either choose to pay it for it monthly, and you can't cancel that if you go for the monthly annual option. You're just basically paying over, uh, paying for the full year subscription, but over the year, over month, or you can pay for it just once at the at the beginning for once. So it's 179 or 180 for an annual subscription, pay for it all up front, or $19 a month if you pay for that monthly. But again, you can't cancel that, you're just in for the haul to pay for, you know, basically $240. So it's really just up to you. If you don't want to, you know, spend 880 bucks right away, then just pay $20 a month or $19 a month now, then it makes sense to do it that way. Otherwise you can go just 180. The, the main difference though, with a subscription, you're not buying for any particular version of Capture One. So when a new version comes out, say in a year from now when the next one when 22 comes out or whatever they call it then you'll be able to just upgrade to that as soon as you want to as soon as it comes out or wait a little while it doesn't matter you'll be able to use either the older version as long as you want or upgrade to a new version as when you're ready to, to upgrade to that without having to resubscribe or pay more or anything like that however with the perpetual license the one that's 300 dollars, that's again specific to a version and when a new version comes out when you if you want to use the new version you have to upgrade and we'll talk about upgrades in a minute. I want to go over the other options for the camera specific version. So let me go back. So let's just look at one of the camera specific ones. The pricing is the same. So the perpetual license for camera only is 200 or it's 199. And again, that's just for this version and for this camera, in this case, the Sony. And then the subscription plan is $149, $149 for the annual, $14 for the annual but paid every month, and then monthly, you know, the month to month option where you can cancel anytime is $19. So it's a bit less um, to, again, reflect the fact that there's the only difference between these versions is the fact that it's specific to a camera. You have all the full power of Capture One. So let's talk about upgrades. And to do that, I'm going to have to log into my account. So in my account, I only have a very old version. So, so I've already upgraded my Capture One Pro 20 to 21. I did that back in November. They had some discounts and it was actually a really good price. If you're upgrading basically the most recent license, then it's the best price for the upgrade price. So say, let's say that in 2019, I purchased the perpetual license for $300. Then in 2020, last December, I would have been able to upgrade for about $150. Now this is Capture One Pro 11. This is from 2017, I think. It's uh, three or four years older than the current version. And because it's not the most recent version, the upgrade price is 199. Now this is 199 for the full all camera version. And and again, if you purchase the upgrade before the new, like right before the new version came out, they had a lot of specials and discounts, and there were discount codes you can get kind of pre-purchase the upgrade to get at a much lower cost. If you didn't do that and you're wondering about upgrading, then this is what the cost would be if you have an older version of Capture One. Again, if you have the most recent version of Capture One and you just want to upgrade kind of one version up, then it's um, about 150 or 159, something like that, to do the perpetual license. You can also, if you want, switch tracks over to the subscription and just pay 125 for the first year. Now, there's no monthly option here. It's really just the first year you get a big discount on the subscription. Instead of 179, it's it's 125, which is not bad. But again, the following year, it'll be the full price for the annual subscription. So it'll go back up to 179 or whatever it is in a year. Probably that, but they could always change it. So my suggestion is if you are looking at 
purchasing capture one one option is if you don't upgrade every year if you're not buying the latest camera every year who does that really uh, then you may want to consider getting a perpetual license and then sitting on it for two or three years and then paying for the upgrade at that point because you'll probably save money oh, i mean it's bigger upfront costs and it'll be you know a fairly good cost every year every time you do an upgrade but basically you'll be you'll be paying about what the annual subscription fee is but only when you want to upgrade which could be every two or three years perhaps so let's talk about whether or not you should upgrade to 21. If you already have version 20, and that's your latest version. That, so if you have version 20, then 21 is useful to you if you have a Leica and you want to tether, and or if you want to use some of the new workflow features that are in 21, um, which really are great if you're doing bulk editing or uh, on many images. This new speed edit feature, which I'll try to cover in a video soon, that is actually quite useful. Um, and there are a few other smaller tweaks in Capture One 21 that are nice to have. It is a dehaze filter uh, that's useful if you're doing more, um, I see that more as a landscape type of thing. I've seen that used for headshots, but you generally don't need it in headshots if you're doing the exposure of the background correctly. The, uh, yeah, that, so 21 is a fairly small change outside of some of those bigger features that I mentioned. If you have 20, you're probably fine. If you have older versions and you're on a Mac, then you're probably going to want to upgrade to get Big Sur. And if you have a new Mac, the Apple Silicon Macs, then you will almost certainly want to upgrade to get a version that supports Apple Silicon. Uh, other than that, um, it is, you know, it's an update. If you, oh, the other, only other reason perhaps, I mean, unless you just want to get the latest version or there's a bug fixes that you want, is if you get a brand new camera sometime in 2021 that is only supported by the latest version. That's that often happens, though. They will. So that's another reason to upgrade, as always. That's uh, Capture One. Please check out Cropped. I'm really curious to hear your feedback and and get you know if it works for you and if and if you have any other features you'd like to have in there. It actually does do more than just square crops. It does some different shapes and uh, also adds borders and some other things coming that uh, aren't done yet, but that will be out soon. Um, anyway. I'm Robert Reed. Thanks for watching. And which one that might work for you? Different, different.